So today, tonight I should say, I'm going to work on finishing Psalm 37. We've been at this a while. We're going to wrap this psalm up. Choosing a righteous path. I want to tell you about several brothers that are famous. Well, infamous. One of those things. Um, there was a brother named uh, Yes Lamb. And Yes Lamb ran a multi-billion dollar company. And he built construction. He, did, he was in construction and built very large industrial buildings all over the Middle East. And uh, his multi-billion dollar company is highly respected and praised. Unfortunately, he has a brother who's more famous than he is. You know who his brother is? Osama bin Laden. He's, he was the radical brother. There's the construction brother and the radical brother. Okay, I'm going to try another set of brothers for you. Um, there's a man named Edwin. Edwin was a Shakespearean actor. Um, one of the most famous Shakespearean actors in the world. And, and uh, he had a great reputation on his own. Matter of fact, he, he saw a young man on uh, railroad tracks that was in danger and saved his life. And that young man was named Todd Lincoln. And you know what Edwin's last name is? Booth. Edwin Booth. And Edwin Booth, believe it or not, was loyal to the Union cause. Now, of course, he has his brother, John Wilkes Booth, which we're more familiar with. And so this kind of hurt his reputation. But he was nothing like his brother. He was very different than his brother. What makes these brothers, sets of brothers I mentioned so different? You can go back to Cain and Abel. And, uh, you know, one worshiped God with a sincere heart, and one was proud and lifted up, and worshiped God their own way. But what's the difference between these sets of brothers? Well, the difference is the choices that they made. They both had the opportunities to make good choices. And one brother did it, one brother didn't. And as I look at this passage, Psalm 37, it, it contrasts the righteous and the wicked. And, you know, all of us have to make that choice of, of which side are we going to be on. Who are we going to identify with? What are we going to dedicate our life to? What's our life going to be about? And, you know, the fact that you've chosen to be here, this says a lot about where you're at, and I appreciate you coming out. But each day we make these choices. Each day we face temptation. So Psalm 37, I'm going to start reading in verse 32. It says, The wicked watcheth the righteous, and seeketh to slay him. The Lord will not leave him in his hands, nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait on the Lord, and keep his way, and he shall exalt thee to in inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. I have seen the wicked in great power, and spreading himself like a green bay tree. Yet he passed away, and lo, he was not. Yea, I sought him, but he could not be found. Mark the perfect man, behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together, the end of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. And the Lord shall help him and deliver him. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them, because they trust in him. Now you see this, this, this passage, and it's laying out this contrast between the righteous and the wicked, and how their futures are so different, and how their lives are so different, and how the Lord sees them differently. We want to be on the righteous side. That's what I would say to us. We want to make those choices and be right before the Lord. But I'm going to just highlight the verses. I'm, I'm going to put them in order. We're going to look first at the path of the wicked, the path of the wicked, uh, the decisions the wicked people make. You know, the, the, the word you see often in, in your Bible in the Old Testament is um, the road the wicked take or the path. It's like a series of decisions that lead in, in a direction. And once you get in these paths, it's, it's hard to change. You know, once you have the right habit, you stay with it. It's hard to change that too. So we want to develop the right habits and, and have God lead us. But the path of the wicked. Um, we see the wicked seek to hurt the righteous. Verse 32, the wicked watcheth the righteous and seeketh to slay them. Um, the wicked don't like righteous people. Then, and, uh, you know, someone that lives in opposition to God, seeing someone who is in obedience to God, that's a rebuke to them. You know, nobody wants the workplace with the one Christian because then everyone else looks bad. So they want that one person to change. If, if you'll be the one righteous person and you change for them, 
then they can ex excuse how they live their lives. They can continue on living the wrong way. And so um, this is why they don't like us. Um, I want you to see the wicked seem to prosper, but they will collapse. Verse 35, I've seen the wicked in great power spreading himself like a green bay tree. It's, this is like Psalm 73. Here the wicked is. Everything seems to be going so well for them. They're this big tree that's, that's putting shadow. They seem powerful, high and mighty. You ever seen a wicked person that's just seemed to have it, you know, they had the world by the tail. Things were just going so well for them. And yet what happens? In verse 36, yet he passed away and lo, he was not, yea, I sought him, I saw him, but he could not be found. It's like it all crumbles. I feel like every week in the news, there's a new celebrity who's wicked and their life kind of falls apart. There's an allegation that comes out, something's happening behind the scenes, you know, something happens in their personal life. I mean, how, how long do marriages last in Hollywood? You know, and I know I, I heard a celebrity that was praised recently, you know, they their second wife, that was the great marriage. And it's like, well, I guess that's good. Their second marriage went well. But a lot of them, you know, second, third, fourth, it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's really sad to see what's, what's happened and, and uh, how they're lifted up as these great examples. When, you know, these places like this, every five minutes you look for a new spouse, you don't really care. And they disregard, you know, what, what God has set aside as, as sacred. They have a flippant attitude toward it. And, uh, you know, I, I think that's, we'd all agree that that's, that's a wicked way to think. But how often do their lives just, they start out, they look like they're doing great, and then it just ends up in collapsing. And, uh, you know, it's like the wicked, they don't even see how they're stumbling. And then verse 38, but the transgressor shall be destroyed together, and the end of the wicked shall be cut off. Um, the wicked are cut off. They, they don't last. There's not stability in what they're doing. Um, it's... You know, it's, it's temporary. It's, it's something that, you know, maybe for a period of time things go well, but there's no future in what they're doing. There's no end to this. And so we don't want to buy into these, these uh, ways of thinking, these values. And then the second part of this is the path of the righteous, the path of the righteous. Um, you know, God protects the righteous now and in eternity. Verse 33, the Lord will not leave him in his hand nor condemn him when he is judged. The Lord, I believe, he watches out for us. You ever, you ever have something that should be a total disaster in your life and it's not? Somehow it works out and it's okay? And it, it's just like the Lord had his guardian angel that right there that kept something bad from happening. And at the last minute, something fraudulent was exposed or you didn't, you didn't take this trip and it turned out to be a bad trip or whatever else. And uh, you know how much the Lord watches over us in this life. And if you have difficulty in this life, eternity. You have this to look forward to and that there is a reward for the righteous and uh, God remembers the things that we do. So, God protects the righteous um, and if, I want you to notice next, if we wait on the Lord God will judge the wicked. It's all coming. We have to be patient. Wait on the Lord, verse 34, and keep his ways and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. Be patient. Be patient, you know. Well, why isn't, why isn't this wickedness being judged? How can God allow sin? Well, this is temporary. This isn't the final thing. God hasn't written the final chapter yet. So I can't get too caught up in what's happening in the moment and be a prisoner and a slave of this very second. I have to give God time to work. God, God will take care of things in his time and his way. But I have to wait. Patience. How many of us love to be patient? Oh, not me, I'll tell you. I'm not a fan of waiting. I think everything we do is instant. You know, and uh, you, know, you, you think about how far our society's come. You know, you can sit on an airplane and you're traveling 450 miles an hour and you're upset. And why are you upset? Because the Wi-Fi on the, the, wi -Fi on the plane is slow. You're like, how can I suffer like this? You know, if, if, if you go back 100 a, a years, people are taking four months to make that same trip and half the people are dying. And the internet, they wouldn't even have any idea what that was. But we, we've come to expect everything in instant. You know, we have microwavable meals. You quickly heat them up. And, uh, you know, instant Wi-Fi. Everything that we do is just, we want everything to be fast. But, you know, sometimes the Lord makes us wait. And he has to put all the pieces in place. You know, why doesn't God make this person do this? Or why doesn't he put pressure on that person? Well, you know, 
God is a, he has a, a, a tactical mind, I believe. He's working in all these little events. And how many times do you talk to a person that comes to Christ or makes a change in their life and it's all these little things that kept popping up over time that eventually convinced them. And, you know, the Lord, the Lord has his timetable and he is working. He doesn't always tell us what's happening. We're like Job. Why is this happening? We don't know. But he is at work. We have to be patient. We will end up where we're supposed to end up. That person, the Lord will touch their life if we're praying for them. But he's working over time. God works in lifetimes. God doesn't work in, like, like we work, instant. We want instant. And that's not how God works. And so God has a better plan. We must be patient. We should wait. Uh, verse 37, we see the righteous have peace. Mark the perfect man and behold the upright, for the end of the man, that man is peace. We have a peace the world can't have. The world is peaceful when things go their way, when they get what they want. But we don't live for this world. And so my peace isn't dictated by every single thing in my life going the way I want it to be. I don't have to have total control over everything to be happy. I can have peace that things are okay. How many times as a Christian do things, are your life in total chaos, but somehow you're like, even though this is wrong and that's wrong and that's wrong, you ever have the deep feeling it's going to be okay? It's all going to work out somehow. I just need to keep going. I'll, I'll, I'll eventually get where I'm supposed to go. Things will happen. I just have to be calm and peaceful. And the Lord can give us that peace that over time things will work out. Um, even when we're overwhelmed, even when we don't see it. So the righteous can have peace. And then uh, verse 39 through 40, God delivers the righteous in the time of trouble. But the salvation of the righteous or deliverance of the, is of the Lord. He is their strength in time of trouble. The Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. When things start to go south and things are blowing up and stuff is not happening the right way and it's, it's panic and chaos, when, when things don't go how they're supposed to go, maybe the car breaks down or there's a problem at the house, the Lord will be there for you. The Lord will help you. He'll hold your hand. And, and you'll have what you need at that time. Now, you, you think right now, I couldn't handle that if that happened. If this thing happens at work, you know, I don't know how I'm going to handle this. Well, the reason why you don't have peace about it right now is it hasn't happened yet. When the time comes, God will give you the peace to deal with it. He doesn't give you, always give you the peace ahead of time, though. But when the time comes, the Lord will be with you. So we can rest on the Lord. In times of trouble, God will be with us. And, and uh, God will be there, and, and we can have this peace. So, this passage lays out a contrast between the righteous and the wicked, and how God is specially close to the righteous. Let's be those righteous people. Let's be right before the Lord in our personal walk, and in the way we treat others around us, and in our own hearts as we read God's word and pray that, that we are doing what, what God is leading us to do. Let's make those choices, okay? And that's Psalm, Psalm 37. All right, this is your chance. You have two minutes. Any closing comments you want to make?